like, comment, share, and subscribe. Pause the video right now to check out my social media, my radio show, and that drummerguy.com. And most of all, enjoy the following presentation. Hello? Hi, how's it going? Is that Josh? Yes, it is. How are you doing, Josh? This is Troy. Hi. I'm doing good. I, I apologize uh, for uh, not being able to get to you a couple minutes ago. Uh, uh, things on my computer were freezing up, and I wasn't able to answer. But uh, thank you very much for taking time to be able to do this interview. You're absolutely welcome. No problem. I know what it's like with technology. I'm having hideous things this end as well. But I'm getting you loud and clear, so everything's fine. Oh, fantastic. Well, of course, sir, we're here to talk about your brand new album. Uh, from Ari, which is coming out March 23rd through Nuclear Blast. I've just gotten the chance to be able to check this out over the last couple days, and I'm absolutely in love with what uh, all of you have accomplished with this album. It just it feels so beautiful, so hauntingly beautiful, and I just love everything that's going on with the album. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful to hear, Josh. Thanks very much. Oh, not a problem. So how did this? Well, it's just, it just it's always it's always lovely when somebody understands it, you know. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's always that way. It's it's fantastic. Oh yeah, and you know that that's the great thing about it is when you are trying to make uh, something different with a with a different project, and you really want people to like understand what's going on uh, conceptually, lyrically, musically. Yeah, and when yeah. all of that comes together in the right way, it just makes for a great experience for the listener and for the ones who make it. I couldn't agree more. Absolutely, and that's that's always been. And I know it's obviously obviously the same for you as well. They're always the most profound experiences, and always have been since since we were kids. Do you, do you remember when you used to sit with headphones on, completely lost in your own universe? universe listen to your favorite music it was wonderful well that's that's kind of what we were uh, trying to propagate with the Ari idea you know that's that's what we wanted we wanted people to feel the same way we do about about the music so I'm delighted to hear that you do oh I'm and likewise I mean I'm so happy to see that uh, a project like this can come together in such a way and you know, uh, from what I've seen, there's been a lot of great reception to the album so far, and it's really great to see that. I mean, being able to expand upon your musical horizons and have it work out in such a great way. Absolutely, yeah. Couldn't agree more. So things are, um, uh, I mean, gratifying isn't the word. That's, that's the wrong word, but we're very... Um, uh, Content with the way things have turned out, we we were content with the um, uh, with the album as it is, uh, but we're more than that. We're, we're content that uh, how we wanted the thing to to realise itself has uh, has been successful in that in that sense. So we're 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 on a high really <laughs> with the whole thing. So for those that may not be familiar, how did this whole project come to be? Well, it, it started back in 2010, so it's been a it's been a, a slow train of coming, as they say. It's a, it 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 started with um, getting right back to the very beginning, and it was uh, Johanna, the singer. She uh, she was working with Thomas on on a, a solo album, or he'd written a song for her. She wanted me to go and play on her album, so I, I went to Helsinki and played on on her album as a as a as a guest musician. Uh, we hit it off big time. We had very similar uh, musical tastes. I was instantly uh, knocked out by her voice. You know, I. I I instantly knew that I was in the presence of, a, of something really un unusual, uh, something quite unique. She's never, and incidentally, she's never, never sung in English before, which was another uh, another motivation for us was to get that voice exposed to a wider audience. You know, because in Finland she's quite well established, but uh, outside of Finland she's unknown. So it's uh, it's nice to have Ari as a vehicle to expose that celestial, ethereal. Uh, elf-like voice um, to a to a much wider wider audience. So so it started like um, getting back to. I, I'm sorry, I digress. Uh, getting back to it, um, we decided that we would work together on something. We didn't know what. We just knew that we wanted to to make music uh, together as three friends. And um, so as as time wore on, I was invited to um, produce an album for her. Uh, but the record company was very much a, a pop record label, so um, 
our grand ideas of extended pieces didn't really fit with them. So it was the the, the classical time honoured um, artistic differences, you know. So we uh, we we shelved that. We shelved the idea there. Then I, I wrote a song for her. Uh, called Aphrodite Rising, and her and, and uh, Tuomas came over to my place in Yorkshire, and we um, recorded it, and then we knew that we were on something marvellous. We thought, we've got to do this. But because of our, our commitments to Nightwish, and uh, she had a couple of, uh, she was contracted to do another couple of albums, we had to put the thing on ice, so we, we put it into a nice little um, box, albeit a box that was covered in pre-Raphaelite paintings, because it's that kind of thing. And we locked the music in the in the corner of, of our minds, and then we we waited. We just waited. We spoke about it over the years. We we never let go of the um, of the plan, but we we had to wait for the right moment. And the right moment came when we we took our sabbatical after the Endless Forms tour. And uh, we we literally went, "What are you doing this year?" And it was like, uh, "Nothing much." Well, what about uh, let's do it? So we. We we took the we took the the first step and the the first step was bizarre because it was um, it was upside down and back to front. We we did all the promotional photographs uh, and, the, and started on the artwork for the album before we'd written any music. You know that's just incredible with the way that uh, everything was able to come together like that. I mean, uh, and no one a song like Aphrodite Rising was one of the first songs that. Uh, was written uh, a part of this project. I mean, it's it's really great to see how everything was able to uh, progress from that time. And, you know, just when all the stars align and you're able to start working on this project again and get a full-fledged album out of it, I mean, even though it did take a few years, it was absolutely worth it. Well, you've nailed it there with stars align. I love that. But the stars did align, and uh, we we knew that there was a time. There was a time, and it was it was it was coming. But we just never we couldn't we couldn't um, predict when it was going to happen. Which makes it all the more precious to us that uh, we found that time. We we grabbed the time, and once we once we actually grabbed it, it. It, it flew, Josh. You know, it flew. It took off. We ended up um, working solidly for about six months. You know, I'd be sat down in my studio um, at four in the morning in my underpants writing string parts out, you know, and <laughs> you know, completely <laughs> consumed and totally inspired by what was being thrown at me from Finland and likewise I was throwing I was throwing music through the ether it was like a kind of cosmic tennis a musical tennis and we were throwing music at each other through the ether and contributing to it and uh, and the the other wonderful um, uh, truth that we found is that when when you are so like-minded uh, the, the ego in the ego in creation dissolves completely. There was never any doubt that anything that, that was being given to me from Finland, any of the, any musical ideas that was coming from Thomas and Johanna, there was never any doubt that uh, that I would I, w I would do anything less than love it. It's a peculiar thing. It's a state that I've never been in before. You know where there's you know when there's absolutely no conflict. When you're with people, when you're with friends, where you know you can say and do anything, and you're never going to run into into conflict. So we were extremely lucky there, um, in that it, it forged our direction and it forged the sound, that spirit. You know that, that we share. We're very similar in in our outlook, not just musically, but but uh, in our view of the world. So um, it was it was just a. A, a deeply inspiring six months and it was a whirlwind you know it, it flew and that is such a great thing to hear because there there's so often when it comes to music that there's so many different polarizing sides that happen even though there can be great musical chemistry there's just things that don't work out for one reason or another but it's so great to see with this project that all three of you were just thinking exactly alike, writing the music that you want to make, everything flowing together the way that it should, and that always makes for the best music when everyone is on the is on the same road, making sure that making the best music possible. Spot on, absolutely spot on, and that's uh, that's where um, something truly uh, revelatory occurred for all three of us. You know, it was 
I would receive music and I would, I would, as I said, there was no doubt, but I would get fired up. I would get completely fired by what I was being given. You know, Johanna, Johanna was used to, um, this is just, a, a, well, it's not really an aside. It's, it's part of the same question that, you're, that you've been touching on. But she, uh, for years, for the last 10 years, she's worked in... Um, very much in the record company system and uh, what I mean by that is she's been very um, uh, not manipulated but controlled by production by producers so for her this was this was like being released it's like she was released from a from a, a kind of prison she she came out and she had the freedom to do exactly as she wanted she didn't have some some guy um, looking at her through a through a, a, a glass at a mix and desk saying um johanna could you just do that one again could you just do that one a little lighter or whatever she was in control of every single aspect of her own performance and it was it was just mind-blowing for me and thomas because we weren't there you know when she was singing she wanted to do it privately so that she didn't feel like she was singing for us you know, when you're when you're in a studio situation, you you naturally start to play for other people. You play for the people on the other side of the wall. So it, this was this was a magical um, uh, discovery for us. For her, it's even more. You know, for her, it, it it set her free. So she was doing the most extraordinary uh, vocal harmonies and. That I'd never heard the likes of before. You know, the, she was using modes, musical modes that shouldn't, uh, would never get used, and she was doing it on instinct. And she'd never been given license to express herself because she was a recording artist for a recording company, and she did what was expected of her. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, and. That, that's a lot of things that uh, people don't realize when it comes into different styles of music, especially when it comes into more of the mainstream pop music. It is so much more controlled, and the artist does not have as much control over what they're singing or what they're playing or whatever the case is. So yeah, I just imagine yeah. for her when she finally gets in that vocal booth and she's able to start recording for this album, there, e even though it might have been a little weary at first, I just imagine there's that moment where she just realizes that she can really take full control over what she's doing for the, one of the first times yeah that's that's precisely it man that's precisely it and and she's she's she feels completely illuminated by the experience and she never wants to work in that old way again and she doesn't have to uh, i mean auri is auri is um is now a it's a part of us and it's a commitment that we've made it, 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 you know we uh, <laughs> we've been doing lots of interviews and and you haven't asked the obvious questions, which is great, you know, <laughs> yeah. but we've had a lot of obvious questions. And uh, one of the most obvious is, um, and stupid, if I must say, is, oh, is this a threat to Nightwish? And is this a threat? And, uh, no, it isn't. It's, 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 it's completely in tandem with Nightwish. It's the same spirit driving Arias that, is, that, that's, that uh, drives Nightwish as well. And uh, they're two completely different things, but they're both connected by the same. A friend of mine in, in um, LA, um, he, he coined the phrase a vehicle of spirit for, for Nightwish. He, he came to our show in, uh, I think it was at the Greek in LA, and he, he said, oh, it's like, a, it's like a kind of vehicle of spirit, you know, to watch you play together. And I thought that was the most beautiful description. And, and I mean, I was deeply flattered that he, he would, he would uh, call us that. So um, Auri is a vehicle of spirit too, and it's, it's the two things um, run perfectly together. They're related, and uh, there's no threat to either. Besides, as you as you Josh have gathered, uh, one hundred percent, it's nothing nothing like Nightwish. You know, I mean, there's 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 musical essences in there that are that are Nightwish, for sure. There has to be because me and Thomas are in Nightwish, so that's that's um, unavoidable. But it's not it's not a Nightwish type of band it's not metal and it's not um it's not what you would expect it's we tried we, our our remit our plan was to try to to make a music that we wanted to really hear ourselves 
and we would really hope that other people would understand the way we feel. That was our, our motivation, nothing else. So um, when people are going, oh, is this the end of night? We so it's just bollocks. Well, I just got to say, first of all, uh, thank you for pointing that out about me. And, you know, it's just, um, I really don't like uh, asking the obvious questions or uh, the ones that have nothing to do with uh, what's going on. Like, uh, you know, this is about an amazing new project called the Ari. So, you know, it's like I would like to focus on that rather than uh, uh, obviously with Nightwish going on, you know, it's like I, I want to be able to help promote uh, the new project that you're a part of rather than uh, the stuff that you're expected of and have more of a well, conversation that way. Well, this is it. And this has been the lovely vibe since we started talking about this is that um, you know that and, and I know that as well. And what's the point in talking about Nightwish? I mean, everything, uh, we, we love Nightwish. We love it. We, we are part of Nightwish. But uh, th this Auri thing is a, it's it's a new entity and it's um, it's it's a fascinating new subject. So yeah, I'm I'm up for talking about Auri <laughs> with you. <laughs> oh yeah, and you know if this was different circumstances, I probably have like hours upon hours of questions I'd love to ask about Nightwish. But this is such a great project with Auri. I mean, you know, it's just just like you said. You know, it is so much different. Even though there are elements that do harken to hearken to Nightwish obviously between you and Thomas but you yeah, know it's yeah. just like being able to focus more on this uh, dark ethereal atmospheric type of music I mean it's so great to see that there is no focus on metal there is no uh, focus on symphonics and everything it's just going into a much different style and being able to really spread your wings rather than feeling like you have to be pigeonholed writing in one particular style Ah, oh, that's lovely. That's lovely to hear. Yeah, and that's that's what really draws me to it. I mean, obviously, I can tell that there's the chemistry between you and Thomas when it comes into uh, the instrumentation of everything, but being able to hear different vocals on it, hear different styles of music that's being played than what I would hear from Nightwish album, I mean, it's, it's yeah. really important to be able to experiment with uh, different genres, different styles of music, if that's where your heart wants to be. Absolutely. Bang on. And that's it. I mean, we we are part of Nightwish. We love Nightwish. Auri is uh, a different thing through necessity. We couldn't express this in Nightwish. We express something completely different in Nightwish, and it's glorious. We, uh, it's glorious. But Auri is... It's a different. It's a different path. It's a different road, and uh, and it's it's just as wonderful. It's just as wonderful. It just depends on how you you choose to walk down it, I suppose. And and with it, I mean, uh, obviously, uh, you you guys in Nightwish uh, do have an amazing tour that's going to be coming up soon. But after that, is there uh, any plans of any live shows with Ari coming up? There are indeed, yeah, but, but get this, Josh, it's going to have to be 2022 because the next four years we're, we're fully submerged in Nightwish land. Oh, I, I'm sure of that, yeah. Oh, it's, it's absolutely bonkers. It's 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 insane our schedule, but we we are um, we're definitely going to do our live because it will be amazing to play this music live. You know, it, it, we 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 can't talk about anything else at the moment. We're so we're so completely submerged in 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 Ari that uh, yeah, it, the, the the live idea is is filling us with. <laughs> deep, deep excitement. We've, we've came up with the idea that in 2022 we're going to make another album because thankfully for us we've got a fabulous record label, Nuclear Blast, who um, when we, we had the idea of, of um, bringing Auri to life, they instantly went, we'll have it. And we went, but you haven't heard anything yet. And they went, we don't care, we'll have it. <laughs> and it was like, well, okay, <laughs> wow, all right then. And uh, so when we made, but here's the, the best thing is that they didn't ask to hear anything. And they went, no, surprise us. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, imagine a record company saying, surprise us. It's it's crazy. I've never in 30 years heard of any, any anything like that in the, in the music business. So we sent it to them as soon as we'd mixed it. By the way, we mixed it in real world. Peter Gabriel's studio down in uh, the south of England. It's oh, amazing. Wow. That is incredible. I mean, he's produced so much great music from that studio, and it's awesome to see right that you'll be able to be a part of that. Well, exactly. The atmosphere in there is extraordinary. You know, it's it's there's so much great, as you've just said, there's so much great stuff that came out of that studio. And, uh, I mean, I'm, I don't know about you, but I love Peter Gabriel. Oh, yeah. And, 
definitely. Yeah, classic stuff. So, um, and and they've got it's got a really unique atmosphere that was that was by design. You know, you have to you'll have to go and have a look at some photos of it, Josh, because you've got to you've got to pass over water. You've got, it's built on an old mill, so there's a, there's an old pond there, and you have to cross over a bridge to get to the studio, and it's symbolic of leaving the other world and moving into another world that you've got to cross over water. It's like from old Celtic mythology and old um, uh, Nordic mythology, you know, that you, you, your spirit passes over water into another realm. And Gabriel designed it with that in mind, so you get you do get a really unique uh, atmosphere that's unbelievably conducive to to extraordinary moves musical moves and we mixed the whole album in there and it was it was it was quite something it was uh, i mean it was an experience <laughs> that was it's it's hard to describe but do go and check out some photos of it it's amazing amazing place and that sounds like the the perfect uh, description for what all three of you have done. I mean, whether it's uh, working in a pop career or working with Nightwish, I mean, being able to go into this other world to uh, explore different musical territory and, you know, just yeah, be, yeah, being able yeah, to get yeah, into yeah, that kind of environment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. That's the way. That's exactly, as you put it there, that's exactly what it is. And that's what's been so... So, so wonderful about this project for us, for for us three. It does feel, and you know, it's it's a, it's a it's a strange old world when you make records because um, it's difficult to be. It's really difficult to be objective when you when you're talking about your own music. Uh, it's almost impossible. But but when you've got us three. Uh, worked on this stuff that we've that we've formulated over over a decade it's it's became something truly deep for us for for all three of us it's it's touched us really deeply to the point where we can actually listen to the music now and be disconnected from it you know I, we were talking about this the other night in finland that uh, we we can listen to auri now without johanna and troy and thomas and that's a rare thing you know when you make when you make albums when you make music it's hard to disconnect yourself from it but with Auri because of the shape of it and because of the way we built it uh, we can look at it uh, as you did as you do and uh, and we 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 uh, we're just so honored and in love with the whole idea and it's funny because I was just about to ask if you were at that position yet where you are able to uh, look back on the music and actually be able to fully enjoy it for what it is. And I'm glad to see that all three of you are at that point right now. Yeah, we are. We, we uh, you know, uh, Johanna was saying, oh, God, I was listening to it down on the on the train coming down to Helsinki. And I was going, yeah, I was listening to it on the plane flying to Helsinki. So uh, we do, all three of us are, are, are listening to the music and and... And, and gone deeper into it and hearing more more of it hearing more uh, stuff that even we weren't aware of that, that's in there there was a couple of there's a couple of um, moments there's a song called Desert Flower and there's a piano solo in there there's, it's not a solo it's a little piano motif that leads into the first vocal and it was like hearing it for the first time I heard overtones within it that I'd never heard before and Thomas, uh, he's he's been having the same experience. And uh, your Johanna, Thomas was talking about the some harmonies in Johanna's voice that were invisible when when we were mixing it, but now we can hear them. It's it's like the things revealing itself to us as well uh, over time. It's a it's a it's the wonderful mystery of music, I suppose. Yeah, and I was going to say that too. I mean. Uh, even though I've only had the album for a couple days, with uh, every spin, I'm discovering something new in there, whether it's a different uh, progression or a little motifs like you were talking about. And I just imagine that with every subsequent listen that I'm going to be able to discover something new that makes me want to go back and discover more of it. And that's what a great album does, is it, it gives you that reason to go back and listen to it from start to finish. Absolutely, spot on again. That's 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 always been my experience. You know, since I was a kid, that's always been what's uh, what's what's enriched my life uh, as a musician. Is being able to do that, discover new things in in my favourite music, and I still do, and I, I know that you certainly do. You know, I can st I can listen to 
I can listen to an album I've listened to a million times. You know, I could listen to, for example, Dark Side of the Moon and hear something new in it. You know, I could listen to Led Zeppelin 4 or I could listen to, and I'll hear something new in it. Uh, or every time, or it's like watching you know, some of your favourite films as well. You always see something new, but you've got to be open to it. You've got to be ready to be surprised, I suppose. No, oh, absolutely. And again, that's what's really drawing me to this project. I mean, with it being, you know, obviously with some connection uh, musically, you know, just with the writing chemistry, but, you know, just like with going into new territory with Ari and just being able to explore all these different things that you really couldn't do in Nightwish. I mean, whether it's uh, vocally yeah, or instrumentally or whatever the case is, just being able to really focus on these new ideas and being able to explore new things. So when there is a new Nightwish album, you're able to come up with new ideas. Or when you do work on the next Ari album, you get some more inspiration for new ideas. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. And that, that is actually starting to uh, happen. You know, it is starting to... Uh, to, to well... Uh, yeah, I suppose it is starting to infiltrate into the into the ideas of the next Nightwish album. The Nightwish, the next Nightwish album is starting to, to formulate itself. The ideas are there, uh, conceptually. The the stuff happening, and of course, uh, there's going to be essence of Auri in there. And as you say, it's going to work both ways. Uh, Auri Auri is now an entity. It, it definitely is that. You know, we've we've been saying on we we had a recent um, press junket around Europe. Europe, and uh, we 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 tried to make the point uh, every time because there was always a preconception that somehow this was some kind of throwaway side project tonight, which you know, which it isn't. So um, as if it was something that shouldn't be took serious, it's just us indulging our whims, uh, which again is a a pretty <laughs> nonsensical view, in my opinion. <laughs> But um, that's what you get, you know, from a lot of journalists. And uh, uh, I had to, we, we, all three of us had to keep saying to them, keep reiterating this point all the time that Auri isn't a, a project, it's a, it is an entity. It's a thing that's kind of built itself through our love of it, but despite us. And it's, it does seem to have its own life to that point that we discussed earlier, Josh, where we can listen to it objectively and without Troy or Johanna or Thomas in it. It's a rare position for, for um, musicians uh, to be in. So this has been something we've been trying to get through to people, you know, that it's... Um, it, it's not it's it's not okay well yeah all oh, right Ari yeah so it's um, yeah it's oh yeah side project so tell me about the new Nightwish album it's that's <laughs> not, that, I mean that's just so shit we, we really don't want any of that so so it's refreshing to talk to you about this because um uh, you know exactly what we're up to. Yeah, and I've always been against the grain when it comes to that. I mean, when I want to talk to someone and really show off their music, it's not for another reason, like I'm I'm trying to look for like a clickbait article so it can appear on uh, different metal sites or whatever, or uh, really to talk about like another band that they're a part of. You know, it's when there's a new album that's yeah. coming out and a new entity like you're talking about, there's so much ground to cover, like how it started, how the songwriting goes, how you're feeling about exactly, all that stuff, exactly. and why not cover that? It's, yeah, ba absolutely bang on. You see, this is what this should be. What This is the difference. This is a discussion. This isn't an interview. You know, me and you are discussing this. We're, we're talking about pretty deep things in music. We're talking about the way we love music, uh, you and me. That's what we're talking about at the moment. We're not going through a, a rote set of of, um, of of questions we're, we're discuss it's a discussion that's what I love this is this it happens too rarely unfortunately it, we, we all three of us love to talk about this we love to talk about music we don't want to just answer the cliches you know we don't want to, it's, we, we want to explore it as deeply as as anyone you see talking talking about it it, it should open it more for us as well you know rather than it being a boring set of you know the usuals it's it's we want to we want to find out more about Auri as well <laughs> <laughs> and the only the only way we can do that is to 
to talking about it. Yeah, and you know, just uh, getting back into my style, I have nothing written down, I have nothing typed up or anything, I just, the only thing that I have is the date, just making sure that I have the right date when uh, the album comes out, otherwise everything is coming off the top of my head, it's like my real thoughts yeah, are yeah, going yeah. into this, and that's that's yeah. how a conversation or an interview should be, rather than just reading off a script, not caring about what you're saying, and just waiting to ask the next question, I find that so boring and tedious. <laughs> so, so do I. Good man, that's the way it should be done. Now I've just done I've done four interviews before I uh, uh, called you, and uh, I did one with an Italian guy, and he would he, he was saying to me, he was asking me short, snappy soundbite uh, questions, and and I would answer him, but it was obvious that he he wasn't really listening to what I was saying. You know, I would answer, he go, cool, cool, yeah, cool, um, cool. <laughs> I'd go, right, and he'd go, yeah. So, um, right, so then, blah, 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 and I'd go, yeah, and I'd answer, and he'd go, cool, um, yeah, cool, cool, cool. And it was obvious that he, he wasn't really engaged with what was actually being said. He, he, was, he was asking me questions, and he was recording answers, which is, it, I understand where that's coming from, but it's boring, isn't it? It really is. It, it's it's yeah. boring to listen to. It's boring to conduct, and I'm sure it's boring for you to answer. It is. It is. So ask me some more wonderful questions, Josh. <laughs> well, actually, um, one th <laughs> one, one thing that was uh, I was curious about. I mean, with uh, all of this upcoming Nightwish touring that's going to be going on, uh, outside of uh, actually performing on stage and everything, how much attention are you going to be focusing on, like uh, different re? aspects of it like are, are you going to be practicing anything while you're on the road or doing it, any more interviews uh during the nightwish tour for ari or anything like that yeah we are we're going to do some more interviews while we're on the road i know it's a bit it's a bit i don't know it's just a bit of bad timing really it was the only time that nuclear blast could release it unfortunately because they've got their own systems you know they've got their own um uh syllabus for for releasing albums but it's a shame that we happen to be on tour because we would have liked to have been static, you know. We'd like to have been here and 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 to take the whole wave, <laughs> the wave that's going to hit us from it, and and just find out more about how how people are reacting to it and, and who who gets it and who doesn't. So, but we are, we are um, we do have a bunch of interviews to do while we're on tour in the states. Um, we'll be we'll be doing more promo there, but it does it comes out on the twenty third, and we're we're somewhere somewhere in in the states at that point. Don't know where, but it's a bit of a shame that we can't be um, out and about promoting it. But I suppose we are really promoting it on, with the Nightwish tour. I mean, the, I'm sure it'll, there'll be a lot of fans turning up who'll, who'll have the Ari album, and we'll be able to talk to them about it. But uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how things pan out. Um, after the American tour, we're still going to be doing uh, promotion for Auri though. Um, I'm, I'm going to be heading back over there, see, see what, see what else is is afoot. Um, but and and I am going to be working on Auri music in America as well. I've I've got um, I've got some notation software that I use on a on a laptop, and I'll I'll be using that to sketch some sketch some ideas out. But I have started I have started. Uh, writing more Ari music here at home so yeah everything's everything's moving <laughs> moving along nicely oh I'm, I'm so glad to hear that too i mean even even with the uh, rigorous schedule that's going to be coming up with nightwish and uh fortunately it is coming to my area as well i forget the exact date but uh it'll be awesome to see uh, where you guys are with nightwish right now but with all of that that makes me more excited to see what's going to be going on with ari i mean when you you have like a legacy with Nightwish and you're so excited about this brand new entity that you're going to be a part of, it's going to make I think it's going to make the Nightwish show even more fun because you have Ari in the background now that you can focus a lot of attention to and being able to get that musical growth. That's that's really astute. That is that is the truth of it. It felt like that in rehearsals uh, because the the excitement of Ari and, and this new this new wonder that we've got is there with us all the time and it has um, it has enhanced our nightwish experience uh, because because we've got we've got nothing to prove we've got nothing to lose we've got nothing uh, we we're in it for all the right reasons we we didn't make our to uh, we made it 
basically because we we needed to and we didn't um have an agenda with it we did with none of those things so so from out of that that soil of neutrality we have something wonderful flowering in in all different directions the possibilities of live performance the, the, imagine performing this live live in in a cathedral for example or in some kind of wonderful old old um, uh, renaissance building or something or some old some old uh, church in america you know that that goes back to the the end of the 18th century you know places of 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 deep color and interest to perform this music that's our idea so as as you probably gathered we are we are serious about um performing re music live and we will we, we will do it uh, and i'm looking forward to it i can't wait to do it and what am i looking forward that's an understatement we we can't wait to do it and uh yeah it's 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 looking good josh oh and you know it's just like just like you were talking about like a, all the different places that you could play i just imagine just like a giant cathedral and being able to have those kind of acoustics that yeah. that's going on with with the music it would just make it sound so grandiose live i love the idea of that <laughs> it would be amazing well listen when it happens you're gonna have to fly over and come to a cathedral show I definitely think I have to. I mean, I mean, that just sounds like it would be such an incredible experience. I mean, it would be well, worth the price of admission alone. Well, we're, we're definitely going to do it. We've, we've even we've even called the tour the Castles and Cathedrals Tour, <laughs> oh, and that's that's, so cool. that's our plan. And also, you know, the the uh, I don't know whether you've seen any of the imagery from the album cover yet. Yes. Uh, yeah, some of some of those landscapes again are very hourly. You know what I mean? They're very. They're very reflective of the of the spirit of the music, that kind of hazy, otherworldly landscape. Of we actually caught all of that in Cornwall. Uh, I don't know whether you've ever been to Cornwall, but it's a magical place. It's it's historically well, it's not. It's mythology that uh, King Arthur was born there. You know the legendary. Um, King, he was born in Cornwall, and we stayed in Tintagel, the birthplace of King Arthur. And we shot all our photographs there, so it was, it was, it was a lovely thing to do. And um, we, we've got actually watch out for it tomorrow. The the uh, there's Nuclear Blaster are, are releasing the second single. It's just a, it's called a, a lyric video. So it's it's the song with the lyrics, and. Um, just check out some of the landscapes in that and it'll give you a really good idea as to um how inspirational it was to us oh that that's incredible to hear that too i mean like uh, from the promo pictures that i did see when i was listening to the album the first time i was just uh, closing my eyes and just imagining those kind of landscapes that was going on to match the mood of the music and i'm, I'm glad to see every single detail is just uh so uh covered with all of that i mean whether you know it's uh, the, the landscapes and the style and everything it all molds together into this beautiful project and it's great to see that from every aspect wonderful wonderful yeah that's how it feels for us it's the same thing it had to be that way it had to reflect the uh, the way we the way we 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 felt about the music and we we thought those kind of timeless landscapes and the and the sea uh, we tried to capture that but without the cliche of it you know we tried to we didn't want the usual kind of um uh, you know windswept and mysterious photos of us stood looking wistfully into the distance we we tried <laughs> to avoid that but it's it's difficult when you're in that surroundings to to do but we um we we were blown away by the by the, uh, uh, the the actual artwork of the thing. You know, we we've got some brilliant people working on it. Uh, the the photographer was extraordinary and inspirational as well. He was a visionary. So um, yeah, the 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 whole thing, the momentum of it, the way the things uh, uh, caught itself, the way it's expressed itself, it feels weird. It feels like it does feel like we we're we're on the sidelines watching the thing grow. It's been quite a thing, quite an experience. And with that, I just hope it gets bigger and better from here on out. I mean, I can just hear it from your voice, and I imagine if I talk to 
uh, any anyone else a part of this, like uh, hearing their voices talking about this project and just seeing how happy and positive that you are being able to promote something like this, being able to work on something that took so long to be able to accomplish for the first round and just having that eagerness to be able to show it off to the world, start writing new music, playing those live shows. And that's just so rewarding to me, uh, being able to show off this music is just seeing how happy, hearing how happy you are being able to talk about this and being able to show off everything that you're capable of. <laughs> That's lovely. Well, well, yeah, we 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 really do. And if you if you did if you called Johanna right now, uh, you would get the exact same same vibration being shot over to your house. You would you would feel the same thing. We we it really it really was a labour of love and and is a, a perpetual labour of love. And it's it's something that we intend to do forever. You know, we'll we'll never stop doing it. Now we we've got too much of a we, we've tasted the man from heaven as they say so we've um we've got it now we've got the auri curse we're cursed to forever make <laughs> make auri music <laughs> so we, we we won't stop oh that's that's so awesome to see and you know just like a, the fortunate position that all of you are in to be able to work on your other endeavors and being able to work on ari at the same time i mean there's a lot of people that only get that opportunity to work on one band especially if they get successful enough that they can only write in one style and it's great to see that you are able to expand those musical horizons and really make the music that's going to make you happy <laughs> thanks very much that's again that's uh, that's that's really astute and penetrating vision of, of what our is that's that's it you, you know you've kind of covered everything that we are <laughs> Well, I think I think that would be a, a, a great ending point with this. Uh, thank you so much for uh, taking all of this time to be able to talk to me about everything that's going on with the self-titled release from Ari, which is coming out March 23rd through Nuclear Blast. Now, of course, uh, the upcoming North American touring with Nightwish and years of touring with Nightwish, but being able to talk about everything that Ari is about, uh, whether it's the lyrics, the the motivation, the instrumentation. You know, just everything that went into this album. I deeply love what you guys are doing, and I can't wait to see what you guys are going to be doing next when you have the opportunity. <laughs> That's wonderful, Josh. Well, listen, pour yourself a nice glass of whatever your favorite tipple is, and get those headphones on, and just drift off on it. And I will see you in uh, in the states next month. <laughs> 